Response Macro. You know, Neil, I really wanted to talk to you today because you've been a bull on the economy, and I'm wondering if anything's changed lately as the data has come in week. Well, has the data come in week? I mean, if you look at uh, the Atlanta Fed, which sort of puts all of this together, Q4 GDP tracking, Sarah, is close to 3%. And that's important because the consensus, if you look at blue chip, uh, is at 0.5%. So there's significant upside risk to the consensus. And oh, by the way, uh, I think the consensus is offsides on GDP growth uh, and the Fed, frankly, as well, um, in the first half of next year, because the consensus is looking for basically no growth. And, uh, you know, look at what's happened. You mentioned, uh, I think it was mentioned about home builders earlier uh, in, the, uh, in the program. Yeah, they're up uh, today. Yeah, well, I mean, some recession. I mean, with home builders working. So if interest rates. Well, they've been beaten down pretty hard. Well, up is up, Sarah. Up is up. <laughs> you want to make a bet on whether residential investment is going to be as weak in the first half of next year as it is right now? I can pretty much assure you that it won't be. And at the same time, remember all that fiscal squeeze that people were talking about for this year? Well, what happened with that? What we know now is that the personal income numbers are coming in stronger than expected because. Folks have been underestimating the uh, the mana that was going to be dumped down from the state governments onto uh, onto taxpayers, and that's juicing personal income at a time when gasoline prices are now at year-to-date lows. So, the risks to the economy are when the Fed is hiking aggressively and energy prices are very high. That's not what's going on right now. Gas prices are falling, and the Fed is signaling that it's going to step back. Uh, so. That's where I am at. Uh, I think the Fed it's definitely consensus. It's pretty bullish. Well, I don't know that it's bullish. I mean, I think it's it bullish is. for the economy Compared in the short consensus. run. Wait, wait. It's yeah. out of consensus. I mean, okay, I'm out of consensus. Uh, that's not happened before. Uh, but look, um, what I would say is that it's good for the economy, but it also means that the fixed income market is mispriced. If real economic growth is picking up, it reinforces the Fed's higher for longer approach. Uh, and it'll prompt people, I think, to push out their recession expectations, thereby making cuts in the back half of next year less likely. Paul, do you agree with Neil? Or is he crazy? Well, no, I, I, I certainly don't think <laughs> he's crazy. Um, but, you know, I think, um, you know, when you look at the, what the market is saying here, uh, Neil was talking about interest rates. Maybe it were, it, the, the bond market's mispriced here. But... The Fed, the unanimity that Steve was talking about with, you know, uh, Fed funds rate next year, they're intentionally inverting the yield curve. Now, the Fed itself has, you know, said, talked about the importance of the yield curve in forecasting a recession. And when you have the Fed funds rate 100 basis points above the 10-year yield, uh, going back to 1994, when the Fed has, you know, telegraphed its, uh, its rate decisions, You've, when it's been this inverted, you've seen a recession imminent all three times. So I think in that respect, the market is saying to the Fed, hey, uh, you know, we're looking at different things here. And I think in that respect, you get this little bit of a shock here in the markets. Uh, you know, it's one day. Um, it's certainly a very big decline. But I think overall, taking a step back from a bigger picture, there are some things to like about the market here. First of all, what drove the market lower for the first half of this year was the fact that, mm -hmm. as Neil mentioned, energy prices were higher, they've come in. The dollar was strong, that's come in. Rates are starting to come in as well. So those factors are less of a headwind now for the market. And when you look at internal measures of the market at the most recent low in October, they were much better than they were at the prior lows. And even right now, the market's behavior around this trend line that we've all been you know, watching so intently, it's been a disappointment as we haven't been able to get above that trend line but the behavior of the market this time around has been a lot different, whereas we pulled back immediately and sharply both of those prior periods. For the last two weeks, we've been hanging around these levels just below that level. And as technicians yeah. will tell you, the more often you test resistance or support, the weaker it gets. So in that respect, I think you can take some solace. Lastly, seasonality. December is a mm -hmm. back-end low historically. The lows of the month are typically in the middle of the month, right around December 15th, going back to the early 80s. And so in that respect, uh, the second half of the month uh, is back and loaded, and that sets us up for uh, you know, a potential surprise to the upside. Well, today, in the second 